speaking on FRANCE 24, Mr. Carthy argued every time the EU has had the chance to democratize itself in an attempt to give citizens more of a voice regarding the future of the Union, it has deliberately chosen to look the other way and serve its own elite. The Irish MEP claimed the construction of the European Court of Justice in determining trading disputes between European countries and the rest of the world will alienate citizens in favor of the interests of big foreign corporations instead, he said. Every time that the European Union has an opportunity to democratize it chooses the other path. If you look at, for example, the EU very aggressive trade agenda at the moment, central to that is the creation of a court system that will be denied to citizens and will be actually only accessible to foreign multinational corporations. FRANCE 24 Jet European Union Trade Strategy does not look at the interests of EU citizens, claims Irish met that s not in the interest of democracy. That s not in the interest of the EU citizens. At us in the interest of a very small elite that unfortunately have the ear of the European Commission and unfortunately are directing the progress of the European Union. Mr. Carthy's comments come as Britain has been urged to join the European Free Trade Association court post-Brexit by former Judge Carl Bordenbacher. Emma Bordenbacher claimed EFTA would be a solution to Brexit for the UK insisting the court shared the same values as Britain and would allow the country to remain sovereign. Every time the European Union has an opportunity to democratize it chooses the other path. Matt Carthy, the judge who represented Liechtenstein for the EFTA court, said the door was not closed to Britain taking up the Norway option. He said, when the EFTA court was created it consisted of five participated member states. There was growing and growing, so the original thoughts were the Union would impose its values on these EFTA states, and those values are largely influenced by French and German thinking not so much by Nordic thinking or British thinking. Yet, EFTA had been around for more than 30 years, and the EFTA has its own convictions, its own values. For instance, they believe in free trade. They believe in open markets. They believe in a modern image of man. When I am now with hindsight analyzing our case law, and also my contributions to this case law, I am seeing that we are rather orientated to these EFTA values, free trade open markets and the like. If Britain were to bring one or two judges to the EFTA court, in my view this would contribute to making this even more accentuated. There has always been this, not a split, but to different views of the market economy in the countries in the north and the countries of the south. That probably goes back to a region split in the 16th century. It may go back to the age of enlightenment. There were two types of the market economy developed, one more British style and one more French style and this has never really gone away. Norway, Switzerland, Iceland, and Liechtenstein are all members of EFTA with the EFTA court being responsible for all members except Switzerland. Marbord and Barker also claimed the EFTA court would be more of a sovereign option than remaining tied to the European Court of Justice.